Eric Burgess here. If two dice are rolled one time, find the probability. First, that it's a sum of seven. Second, that it's a sum of seven or 11. And third, that it's doubles. All right, so for, for these two dice problems, I highly recommend making this chart. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. If you can think it out in your head, that's great. But I think for most people, the chart will be quite useful. So we know that our dice can be rolled so that we can get a, a one on the dice, a two. Now I'm gonna give myself a little more room. A two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. All right, these are all the possible outcomes for the dice. I'm going to try and spread them out a little more evenly. And likewise, on our second die, so this is like our first die. So this is our first die going this way. On our second die, second die, we can also have a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. So if we were to add these up, we can get all the sums that would appear in the middle, right? So if I rolled a one on the first die and a one on the second die, I would get a two. And then if I rolled a two on the first die and a one on the second die, I would get a three. And I think you can see where this is kind of going. We would get a four and then a five, then a six, then a seven. And here I'm gonna draw these lines to make it clear that these are what our two dice would be, right? This would be the the second dice, whatever that number was, and this would be whatever our first dice rolled was. And in the middle is their sums. And so if we were to roll a, a two on the second dice and a one on the first dice, we would have a three. And we actually can count this way too. So two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. And then we just start going across. So we get three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're able to make this chart. It's pretty fast to make, and I think it's very worth it. And something that you may notice here is that the, the diagonals are all the same number. Look at this, all fours, all fives. If you, if you wrote it in a way that looks somewhat like a box, you want to make your chart uh, somewhat nice. And this is really, really uh, interesting to note. So if we want just the sums of seven, well, here they all are. This is all the ways, right? And if we could even check it, we could say, well, six... A six and a one, that produces seven. A five and a two, that produces seven. And so in this way, we can very quickly find uh, the sums of. So when, when it comes to two dice, this is a great way to do it. So for part one, now that we have our fancy dancy chart, we're gonna do part one, a sum of seven. So we say, okay, a sum of seven, uh, well, here our sample space, right? So it's condition, condition over sample space, sample space. So our condition is a sum of seven, sum of seven. And our sample space is all possible rules, all possible sums. So it would be all the numbers that are here in the middle of this box. So we've got six numbers across, as we can see, and six numbers down. And we know that the area is defined as uh, six times six. So there are 36 numbers here. If you don't believe me, you can go ahead and count them. Uh, <laughs> that one of the benefits of knowing the formula for the area of a square is you don't have to count them all. So there's gonna be 36. So that is going to be the total number here is gonna be 36, right? Because our length of one side is six and the height is six and so six times six that's 36 that's how we know there's 36 numbers you could count them if you want a sum of seven well let's just count all the seven so there's one two three four five six so we have six out of 36 and this reduces to one over six and if you're not as comfortable with the reducing of fractions you can actually type it in your calculator if you go to 
Uh, the F1 menu, you can type fraction. So we hit the green key because it's green. And there's a fraction there. And here we can type 6 over 36. And we get 1 sixth. So you're able to uh, reduce using the calculator as well. So, okay, now let's go for number 2. And it wants a sum of 7 or 11. So before we had just a sum of 7 on top. Now I say or 11. When they say or, it means you add them. So here are all our sums of 7. We already found out that there were 6 of them. So we're going to have, let's draw our fraction. On the bottom is our sample space. That, does, that has not changed. It's still all the possible sums. So that's going to be 36. And we have a sum of 7. Well, that's 6. Or means plus. And they say 7 or 11. So here are all the 11s. There's two of them. So we just add two. So that's going to be 8 over 36. That's going to reduce. Uh, so 8 divides by 4. So that's going to be 2. 36 divides by 4. That's going to be 9. We can check it. We're just going to go ahead and just pop it in as a fraction. That's going to be 8 over 36. And we get 2 ninths. So we know we're good to go. And we should be boxing our answers too. Make it easy for the instructor to see our work and clearly see where our answers are. All right. So now for number three, a sum or not a sum of, uh, we, they just want doubles. So any place that's a double. So on here, doubles aren't the easiest to see, but think about it. A double is just when the numbers match, right? So a one and a one, that's going to be this number. A two and a two. It's going to be this number, right? Because 2 and 2, that's how we do it. So a 3 and a 3 cross right here. So it would be this one. 4 and 4. And you can see we're just going down this diagonal. A 6 and a 6. So that, that's all our doubles. And so we see for doubles, well, that's just all of these. So our bottom number is still 36 because it's still all the possible rolls. But the top number is all the doubles. So we have... One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six possible doubles. And so we would say, oh, well, it's six. And that is, again, just one sixth like it was before. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now, there's a second version of this chart um, that some teachers do. It's uh, got quite a bit more numbers. But instead of writing out the sums, you just write out the pairs. So you could write out a chart that goes, well, we could have a 1 and a 1. We could have a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, yada, 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 all the way up to a 1 and a 6. Then we could have a 2 and a 1, right? Our, our first dice could be a 2 instead. And then a 2 and a 2, then a 2 and a 3, yada, 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 up to 2 and a 6. And you can make this chart going down until you get to... 6 comma 6 that'd be all the possible rolls that's another way and you can see here the doubles here are really easy to see a 1 and a 1 a 2 and a 2 we'd have a 3 and a 3 a 4 and a 4 it would form a diagonal as well here i just added these numbers right because 1 and 1 are 2 so i just wrote 2 instead uh, i think it's a bit easier and more useful like 1 and 2 that's 3 so you have a 3 here same uh, same chart displays similar information, just a little a little more writing, and I think it's a little less informative in most cases. Doubles are one of the cases where this chart actually would probably be better. If you have any questions about this, let me know. If you're a Citrus College student, definitely swing by online tutoring. We're there to help you. Subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next problem.